Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today is November fourteenth, and it's our news unit, and it's also our all English lecture for the month of November. Again, it's our news watch unit, and we've got a couple of、uh, news stories that we'd like to talk about.、Uh, we are going to be talking about drag queens or、uh, men dressed as girls. And then we're also going to be talking about something going on in San Francisco、uh, regarding PFAS. Okay, and that's some kind of plastic、uh, that is doing damage to our environment. It's also doing damage to our bodies, and I'm more concerned about that. But before we go on, guys, as we always do, we're going to listen to、uh, today's lesson read completely, and then we'll be back to talk about some of these words and phrases and explain some things. Taiwanese culture shines on global stage with Nymphia Wind. Nymphia Wind, a 28-year-old drag queen from Taiwan, triumphed in the American reality show RuPaul's Drag Race, becoming the program's second Asian champion and the first from Taiwan. This challenging reality series demands exceptional stage presence, fashion sense, and humor for contestants to stand out from the crowd. Nymphia. Originally named Leo and born in the U.S., developed a deep passion for drag from a young age, which was further nurtured after watching RuPaul's Drag Race. Her performances, incorporating Taiwanese cultural elements ranging from traditional opera to modern symbols, attracted audiences and showcased Taiwan's rich cultural heritage. Her victory in the final round, featuring a unique bubble tea costume. Not only won the judges' approval, but also filled countless Taiwanese viewers with pride. In her victory speech, she dedicated her win to those who feel out of place, emphasizing that this triumph was a tribute to Taiwan. Nymphia's success story has not only inspired many young people to embrace their identities, but has also highlighted Taiwan's diversity and inclusiveness to the world. San Francisco leads U.S. in banning PFAS in firefighter gear. San Francisco is set to become the first city in the U.S. to ban the use of forever chemicals in firefighters' gear. Local legislators are advancing a bill to prohibit equipment containing PFAS, which are long-lasting compounds that do not break down. Persisting in the environment and posing health risks, PFAS are known for their excellent fire-resistant and waterproof properties. They have long been used in the manufacture of firefighting foam and most firefighters' uniforms. However, the Environmental Protection Agency warns that PFAS can be absorbed through the skin and have been linked to an increased risk of cancer. And potential negative effects on fertility. In response to these risks, the San Francisco Fire Department is testing new PFAS-free protective gear. Despite this, concerns arise that removing PFAS could reduce the gear's fire resistance and airflow, potentially increasing risks for firefighters during operations. These new uniforms are undergoing practical tests. To verify their performance, finding a suitable alternative remains a significant challenge, requiring further research and evidence to ensure the safety and health of firefighters. Okay, everybody, let's get to it. Let's talk about the two news stories that we're going to talk about in today's program.、Uh, the first one is about someone from Taiwan by the name of Nymphia Wind. And of course, Taiwanese culture shines on the global stage with Nymphia Wind. Okay, this is a person who is a drag queen, and Nymphia Wind is a 28-year-old drag queen from Taiwan, and she triumphed in the American reality show RuPaul's Drag Race, becoming the program's second Asian champion and the first from Taiwan. So I'm sure a lot of people are aware of this. First of all, let's talk about what Nymphia Wind is. Uh, she is a drag queen. Again, that's a person who dresses up、uh, as a woman. Of course, it's a man dressing up as a woman. And I think this comes from actually Shakespeare. I think a D R A G means dressed as girl. Yeah, 
And you don't have、uh, women who dress up as men,、uh, but you do have these guys who dress up as women, and they perform on stage. Like they have their own stage name. This person, the, the stage name is Nymphia Wind. A nymph is like a young fairy, you know, that's、uh, very magical. Nymphia Wind is the name that this person. Chose for herself, so she is shining on the global stage. If you shine on the global stage, it simply means that you're getting a lot of attention.、Uh, people are noticing what you're doing, and because Nymphia Wind was on a real show on TV, it's a reality show called RuPaul's Drag Race.、Uh, Nymphia Wind is now getting a lot of attention now. A reality show isn't the same as like a drama that's been scripted that has a story with different characters. A reality show follows real people in life, and、uh, it could be like a competition. Like I love Top Chef,、mm-hmm. which you know, Tom. I watch that, or The Great British Bake Off. Those are reality shows. It doesn't follow a storyline. They're real people competing、uh, to win a prize in something. RuPaul, I think, is the first really famous drag queen from the U.S. that I noticed.、Um, RuPaul's getting quite old.、Mm. I remember RuPaul when I was growing up, thinking, "Well, that's weird. This guy's wearing、uh, women's dresses and wigs and、uh, makeup." RuPaul actually looks pretty good as a, a woman, as a female person. Well, I actually haven't really seen him that much in drag. I've seen him when he appears on talk shows as himself. That was only years after he yeah, never yeah. would actually take off his costume and stuff for many years. Like、so、the you, guys in Kiss, right? Yeah, you only saw them, or you only saw RuPaul as a woman. But yeah, afterwards,、uh, he showed up without all his makeup and costumes, and he's bald. He's a, really tall too. He's like six、tall. foot five or something. Yeah, very like that. tall.、Uh, but in any case, yes. Uh, this person took part in this、uh, particular TV show or this reality show,、uh, Nymphia Wind.、Uh, she triumphed, which means she was very successful there. She actually won an award in that program, and she became the program's second Asian champion and the first from Taiwan. So I guess they have lots of champions from maybe Western countries or Africa or、uh, India or what? Well, India would be Asia, but of course. Uh, she was the second Asian champion, and she was the first from Taiwan. So, of course, people in Taiwan are probably very proud of her or him. I guess、uh, he becomes a she when she is in drag. Yeah, when she's performing, they always refer to the drag queens、um, as a female. So her. So when you hear us say her, it's because、uh, that's the performance persona or person that we're talking about. Um, this is a challenging reality series. It says so. It's difficult. It's not easy. It's hard to just、uh, be accepted to、uh, compete. Actually, in some of these reality shows, it demands exceptional stage presence. So when this person gets on stage,、uh, they have to be someone that you look at, that you're fascinated by. If you have stage presence, it means. Uh, you've got an interesting personality. There's something about you that people just really like to look at.、Uh, they're drawn to you. They don't want to look away. Exceptional means something you don't usually see. Something that's really special or unusually good. So stage presence is very important, not just to drag queens, but to any actor. You want to have really good stage presence. If you go into the performing arts, yep, you got a good, you got to look good on stage. You got to have that exceptional stage presence. It's unique. It sticks out or it stands out.、Uh, you might have exceptional talent in music, for example. So therefore, your parents、uh, register you for music lessons. So yeah, you've got to have that exceptional stage presence. You've also got to have a keen fashion sense. You know how clothes work and how clothes items and your makeup and everything match and look good together. And you've also got to have a sense of humor.、Uh, you're probably going to be talking and saying things, and so they need to、uh, admire your personality. You got to be funny. You got to be entertaining. And of course, if you are a part of this contestant, or excuse me, if you're a part of this competition, you are a contestant, somebody who takes part in this particular competition. 
Uh, could you call somebody like in a race, like a running race, a contestant too? Um. Yeah, I think you can. Don't you think? Yeah.、Uh, I would think so. I, I keep thinking of the word contestant as referring to somebody who's、uh, in some sort of stage contest. But I guess it could be a sports event too. A very、uh, close word, Tom, is competitor.、Hmm. Right? Oh, he was a competitor in the race.、Uh, he was a contestant. I think contestant is more for something like a music contest、hmm. or this kind of reality show. Those are contestants. We often use it for beauty contests, just for you know, like Miss America or Miss Taiwan, Miss World, those sorts of things. But if you are running、uh, or competing in a sports competition, you're probably a competitor.、Mm. We use that more often.、Uh, indeed. So yes, indeed, those are the qualities you must show if you want to win this particular competition: exceptional stage presence, fashion sense. And a sense of humor. Now let's move on now to the next paragraph here. It says, "Nymphia, remember Nymphia Wind.、Uh, she was originally named Leo, and she was born in the U.S. So I don't know how she managed to represent Taiwan. Maybe she had、uh, parents from Taiwan or something, and she immigrated back to Taiwan. I'm not quite sure how that、uh, came about, but in any case,、uh, she was born in the U.S. and she developed a deep passion for drag from a young age." Which was further nurtured after watching RuPaul's Drag Race. I must admit, I only heard about this particular program within the last year or two. I guess it's been around for a long time. It's kind of a cute name because a drag race. When you're not talking about drag queens, a drag race is when cars line up and then they、uh, compete to see who's the fastest. So it's kind of a clever play on words, you could say, because here they're not. They aren't cars racing. They're actually guys dressed up as women、uh, competing to see who makes the best drag queen. So it's kind of a cute title. Now, if you are nurtured, it just means、uh, there's something that is caring for you. It's encouraging you. Maybe you're、uh, nurturing children. Maybe you're nurturing plants that you're growing in your apartment or、uh, in your yard. You can nurture lots of things here.、Uh, Leo felt like he had been nurtured growing up and、uh, becoming more, I think, interested and fascinated by、uh, drag queens because he had been watching RuPaul's Drag Race when he was quite young as Leo.、Uh, RuPaul, like I said, has been around for a long time and、uh, has always been on TV since I can remember, actually, which is a long time. Now her performances again, Nivia. Uh, Nymphia Wind. We refer to Nymphia Wind as her. Her performances incorporating. If you incorporate, you include things.、Uh, Nymphia Wind was using Taiwanese cultural elements, which is really fun. A lot of people aren't familiar with Taiwan in the U.S., and so people are fascinated by exotic or foreign culture,、uh, especially things they're not used to seeing. Taiwan's got a lot of cool things, as you know. So. Uh, Nymphia Wind would include some of those traditional cultural elements. For example, traditional opera, Taiwanese opera, is very different, especially if、uh, if Nymphia Wind was using the puppets that、mm. we often see with Taiwanese traditional opera.、Uh, yes, you could have done that, or maybe sang a song using that particular singing style, and of course that educated people about Taiwan. And so, also notice that this sentence has a clause here. Her performances attracted audiences and showcased Taiwan's rich cultural heritage. So we're talking about her performances, and if we want to describe the performances in more detail, then we have this clause here: her performances incorporating Taiwanese cultural elements, ranging from traditional opera to modern symbols. And then we come back to the original sentence: her performances attracted audiences. And then they showcased Taiwan's rich cultural heritage. So I guess、uh, maybe she had some、uh, symbols on her costume、uh, that represented things from Taiwan, and people thought that was pretty cool.、They、like thought, bubble tea.、Uh, could be indeed that、uh, will come up here in a second here about、mm-hmm. her.、Uh, I guess her、uh, final costume there. And、uh, yes, that、uh, showcased or let people see、uh, the rich cultural heritage of Taiwan. So to showcase here just means to feature. Uh, to have it as the sort of、uh, main attraction of something. 
So she was able to really get the judge's approval. She won the judge's approval. There's a panel on RuPaul's show where the judges, you know, decide who wins or who loses that week, and they all rank them. They decide how they feel about all of the contestants. Now, approval just means someone is、uh, telling you that they're satisfied with what you're doing. They're accepting you. They're saying, "Oh, we like what you're doing." We think that's really good. So she won the judges' approval, but also filled countless Taiwanese viewers with pride. Of course, anyone from Taiwan who is watching RuPaul's Drag Queen show or Drag Race show is excited because they've got somebody from their own culture, their own country, who is representing them, and that would make you feel really proud. So that's why they say they had countless, too many to count, Taiwanese viewers who were watching with pride. Okay, and in her victory speech when she won the contest, and of course she was handed the microphone. What are your thoughts at this very moment? As、uh, she dedicated her win to those who feel out of place, emphasizing that this triumph was a tribute to Taiwan. Now, of course, if you want to be a drag queen, that is a very special. Ambition, and not everybody wants to do that. I've never had that desire myself, but there are some people out there who are very attracted to this idea. And if you are attracted to this idea, well, you're going to be a small minority. Most people don't want to be drag queens, so you'll feel out of place. So she dedicated her win to such people who feel out of place for having that particular ambition, and she emphasized that this was a triumph and that it was a tribute. To Taiwan, so it was a triumph, it was a victory, and a tribute. Well, that's just something you dedicate to somebody.、Uh, you sort of thank somebody for what they've done for you, and so yes, it's a kind of designed to express gratitude.、Mm -hmm. To express gratitude, or show respect or admiration、uh, for something or to someone. Nymphia's success story has not only inspired many young people to embrace their identities, to accept who they are, but also Highlighted Taiwan's diversity and inclusiveness to the world. So, Nymphia Win believes that her participation in RuPaul's Drag Race has brought a lot of attention, good attention to Taiwan. People can see、uh, what Taiwan is like. They can see some of the culture, which is awesome. And maybe we'll get some more tourism here. That would be extra great. Right now, we're going to take a quick break. There's no Chinese teacher. But Tom and I are gonna go eat something, and then we'll be back. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Let's continue with our news watch unit for the month of November. Again, it's our all English lecture, and now we've got another news story coming from. San Francisco. Okay, there are a lot of things about San Francisco that are probably kind of screwed up these days.、Uh, we could talk about them at length, but、uh, we've got another problem there,、uh, which has to do with PFAS, or PFAS as they say, and that's、uh, something that they have in their firefighter gear. Okay, so if you're a firefighter, of course, you try to put out fires. If some of those、uh, famous structures in San Francisco catch fire with their bay windows or whatever. They need to call the fire department, and they drive a great big fire truck over to the fire, and they try to put that fire out. But the firefighters need to wear some kind of、uh, protective garments, some kinds of coats,、uh, so that's their firefighter gear. But I guess they have this sort of plastic、uh, in the firefighter gear that's causing problems both for people and the environment. Oh,、uh, you made me laugh, Tom. You mentioned、uh, bay windows in San Francisco. I have to laugh because when、uh, my mom built or had our our home constructed,、mm -hmm. <laughs> she had to have bay windows. No one had bay windows in Arizona.、Mm. Uh, bay windows. Look it up. B a y windows. They're beautiful, and they they were in a lot of the older buildings in San Francisco, and they're beautiful, and people notice them. So that's why Tom mentioned bay windows. Kind of a feature of a lot of the buildings in San Francisco. They're kind of the windows that stick out from the building a、mm. little bit, so you can put plants or whatever and have more light in your room. My win my own bedroom had a beautiful bay window. Okay, <laughs> well, that would be in your house that you grew up in. Yep. 
Uh, I only saw them for the first time when I went to San Francisco,、oh. and、uh, I saw some here in Taiwan. Some people do have bay windows in certain places, but we're not talking about bay windows、no. today. We're talking about firefighter gear, which、uh, has this chemical in them, PFAS,、mm -hmm. and P F A is the actual.、Uh, Symbol for it, or the actual、um, what is that? The acronym. Acronym, yes, and not anecdote. Acronym, which stands for. Let me see if I can read this. Polyfluoral alkyl substances. Okay, I'm not a chemist, so I don't really know how to read these words fluently. Polyfluoro alkyl alkyl. Okay, so that's or it could、is. be perfluoro alkyl substances. Oh,、uh, it could be that too. <laughs> okay, so talk to a chemist for the exact pronunciation.、Yeah. I'm not a chemist; I'm an English teacher. But in any case, we're just going to call it PFAS for short. It's a it's a chemical, basically. Yeah, yeah、uh, that is used in、uh, plastics and things like that. Now, San Francisco is set to become the first city in the U.S. to ban the use of forever chemicals. And firefighters' gear. So, forever chemicals, I guess, is a kind of chemical that lasts forever or lasts for a long time. That could also include plastic. We're very concerned about plastic pollution because plastic does not biodegrade and return to the environment.、Uh, it just stays that way for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. And so, fish eat it in the ocean, and it floats on the surface of the ocean. It's a big problem, and I suppose this is a similar problem here.、Uh, these forever chemicals. And they're going to ban their use in firefighters' gear. It's not just in firefighters' gear, though. We've been using PFAS for so long. It's in our water. It's in our blood. It's in our air. It's in our fish. It's in our soil. So banning、uh, PFAS in firefighter gear isn't really going to solve the problem. But as we always do, we look at tiny little solutions and we think、mm. that will fix things, like banning straws. What a ridiculous idea! It's not going to help so much when we still have a lot of plastic everywhere. So San Francisco is going to be the first to ban PFAS because that's who they are. They look for kind of crazy solutions that really don't help anyone.、Uh, we do need to figure out how to protect our firemen, though, don't we? Our firefighters、sure. and what they wear. Your gear、uh, can can just be your uniform, but can also be some of the tools you use as well. Maybe you have.、Uh, Gym gear that you take to the gym、uh, that you exercise with. Well, San Francisco、uh, wants to ban the use of forever chemicals. These chemicals, as Tom said, do not break down in the soil. They don't,、uh, you know, biodegrade over time. They just stay where they are, which is why we have PFAS in so many things in our world and our environment, and they cause long-lasting. Problems in the environment to the animals to humans, and they pose or、um, have health risks associated with them. That's a big problem. So we've got local legislators in San Francisco, probably members of the San Francisco City Council. They are advancing a bill to prohibit equipment containing PFAS, which are long-lasting compounds that do not break down. Persisting in the environment and posing health risks. So again, that's what the local government is trying to do. There, they want to ban or prohibit firefighters' equipment from containing PFAS. And again, PFAS are long-lasting compounds that will not break down, and they persist in the environment. They stay in the environment, and therefore, they pose health risks to us all. So, moving on to the next paragraph, it says PFAS. Are known for their excellent fire-resistant and waterproof properties. So this is why they're so great for firefighters' gear, for their、uh, uniforms. If something is fire-resistant, it means it's hard for a fire to even get going. It kind of protects the person wearing something that is fire-resistant. It won't catch fire and burn them before people have a chance to put out the fire. So you can see why this would be a great thing for firefighters and their uniforms. Right. So they have these properties or these qualities, these abilities, and they are fire resistant and they're waterproof. Okay. So of course, if you're a firefighter,、uh, you're going to come in contact with fire. So you don't want the fire to destroy your coat and burn you. And then, of course, you have that hose that you're spraying on the fire, and you don't want that water to get inside and make you all wet. So of course, the PFAS. Have those properties, 
and they have long been used in the manufacture of firefighting foam and most firefighters' uniforms. So I guess they not only use water to fight fires, but they use this kind of foam. I guess that they spray on fires to get them to stop.、Uh, foam. Let's see. That's what you rub on your face when you when you shave yourself. A shaving cream or a shaving foam. And so foam is like a whole bunch of little bubbles all together. I suppose you could call、uh, the stuff floating on the top of your cappuccino as foam. You could, yeah. However, it says the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, as we call it in the states, they're warning that PFAS can be absorbed, absorbed or sucked in through the skin, and we know that to be the the, the case. They've done a lot of studies on this. And have been linked to an increased risk of cancer. I just want to say, what doesn't cause cancer?、Mm. Everything we eat and use all seems to be、uh, cancer-causing, depending on how much of the bad stuff, the poison or chemicals, are in the things that we use. And it also has potential negative effects on fertility, which would mean if a couple are married and they're trying to have children. If if what the firefighters are wearing affects fertility, it means it's going to prevent them from having as many children as they want, or maybe even having any children.、Uh, if you're fertile, it means you're able to、uh, have a baby.、Um, if soil is fertile, it means the crops that are grown there grow very well. They produce a lot of、uh, crops that you can harvest. So these are bad things that come from PFAS, right? And it also could bring about birth defects as well. That could be a potential problem. That's one. And here in the final paragraph, it says, in response to these risks, in order to do something about these problems, the San Francisco Fire Department is testing new PFAS-free protective gear. So the、uh, firefighters in San Francisco there are aware of this problem, and they're thinking, well, maybe we should try some gear that does not have PFAS in it, okay, in the gear, and it's PFAS-free protective gear or protective gear like their coats and their helmets that don't have PFAS in them. That's right. So、uh, it's something that they're working on. We'll see what they come up with. Despite this, or even though、uh, they're trying to test new PFAS-free, remember if there's a free after a word, it means that thing is not in something. Okay, so salt-free food. There's no salt in that food, or sugar-free food. There's no sugar in it. So this this is a new gear they're testing, and it's PFAS-free protective gear. But even though that's true, or despite this, concerns arise that removing PFAS could reduce or diminish the gear's fire resistance and airflow. Here's another problem. So if they If they take PFAS out of their gear or uniforms, it's going to cause another problem, right? So it could reduce or、uh, make it harder for the fires,、uh, you know, to be stopped. It's not as fire resistant as it would have been had it had PFAS in it, and also it could reduce airflow. So potentially, this could increase risks or danger. For firefighters during operations, right, their、uh, coats could catch on fire, and then the air would not flow into the coats, and they might get really hot and perspire a lot, sweat a lot, and maybe pass out or whatever. So, of course, that would increase the risk of、uh, the risks for firefighters during operations or when they're trying to put out a fire. And these、mm-hmm. new uniforms are undergoing practical tests to verify their performance. So, before they start using these uniforms without PFAS. Uh, they want to test them, so they're undergoing practical tests to make sure that they perform well in these kinds of dangerous situations. So, finding a suitable alternative, a different option, remains a significant challenge. This is not going to be easy. It's going to require further research, more research, and evidence proof to ensure the safety and health of firefighters.、Uh, that's one group of people we really need around. Um, we haven't、uh, figured out how AI can、uh, put out fires yet,、mm. right? We need real firefighters. We need to protect them as they do their jobs. And hopefully, we have done our job today in properly explaining today's lesson. And、uh, of course, we talked about a couple of news stories here 
uh, the drag queen from Taiwan, Nymphia Wind, and then the San Francisco Fire Department trying to ban PFAS in its firefighting gear. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this month's edition of News Watch. It's been good having you with us. And you can check out our content on YouTube and Facebook for additional information. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Goodbye.